The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. The force on a liquid dielectric results in a visual evidence for molecular polarization. A pair of capacitor plates are going to be dipped into a dielectric fluid. With the application of a voltage, the fluid is drawn upward into the region between. To be sure that the displacement is due to the polarization induced in the fluid by the field, care must be taken to avoid having an electrically induced force density associated with unpaired or free charges. Such a force density is the result of the force transmitted to the liquid by unpaired charges, each subject to an electric force. Each transfers a force equal to its charge times the average electric field. This force is transmitted to the liquid in which it is entrained, the positive charges transferring a force in the direction of the electric field the negative charges transmitting a force in the opposite direction. For there to be a net force density due to these unpaired charges, there must be a net unpaired charge density, rho sub u. In our experiment, the applied voltage is AC. The source has a sufficiently high frequency that the unpaired charge density throughout the liquid is negligible. The polarization force density is proportional to the square of the applied field. Thus, the AC field produces a force density that has time average and second harmonic parts. The frequency is high enough and the liquid viscous enough that the fluid only responds to the time average force it responds to the root mean square of the applied field. Even with essentially no net charge density anywhere in the liquid, there is a force density due to molecular dipoles induced by the applied field. The dipole can be modeled as a pair of equal charges of opposite sign. In a non-uniform electric field, the force on one of these charges differs from that on the other. Thus, in a non-uniform electric field, there is a net force on the dipole. When there's a distribution of such dipoles in a material, this force is transmitted to the surrounding material. Rather than having particles carrying a net charge transfer their force to the material, it is the dipoles which transfer their force. The result is a polarization force density that is proportional to the gradient in E. With P, the polarization density, it is P dot del E. In our experiment, the non-uniform electric field experienced by the liquid is the fringing field. Thus, dipoles in the fringing field are attracted into the field region. For example, this one is attracted upward. The vertical fields on each charge are of opposite sign. But then, so are the charges. So the net force is up. Here's the experiment. The plates are made from tin oxide coated glass so that they are conducting and yet transparent. So we'll be able to see the liquid through the front plate. The plates used to apply the field are closer together at the left so the field will be more intense there.
They're set in a shallow dish of corn oil, which is then placed in a nitrogen pressure chamber. 25 kilovolts AC is applied. Polarization forces push the fluid upward between the plates. The field intensity is greatest at the left, about 100 kilovolts per centimeter. The polarization force density that pushes the liquid upward between the plates is also responsible for the net upward force on this dielectric slab. This upward electrical force on the slab can be derived using the principle of energy conservation. Here we've divided the force by the area CA of the top slab. The force per unit area is one half of the square of the electric field intensity between the plates, multiplied by the difference in permittivity between the slab and free space. In our experiment, this force per unit area is equal to the gravitational force acting on a column of a liquid having the height C. mass density rho, where g is the gravitational constant. Also, in our experiment, the distance between plates is a function of radial distance. The spacing A is equal to the angle alpha times the distance r from the imaginary line where the plates would join. Thus, the height of rise is inversely proportional to the square of the radial distance. The height of rise is inversely proportional to the square of the radial distance. This experiment teaches an important lesson. The force density associated with polarization is not equal to the polarization charge density times the electric field intensity. In our experiment, this is particularly evident because the permittivity is uniform throughout the liquid volume, the polarization charge density is zero throughout the volume of the liquid. The only place where there could be a polarization charge giving rise to a vertical force density is at the gas-liquid interface. But the field is tangential to the gas-liquid interface, and so the surface polarization charge density is zero there. So rho sub p is zero throughout the liquid, even at the interface. And it's clear that the force density, rho sub PE, cannot be the force density that accounts for what we've seen. The rise of the liquid between the plates is due to the force on the dipoles, a force that can exist even where there is no net unpaired charge, a force that is proportional to the dipole polarization density P and the gradient of E.